أقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول Whomsoever Allah allows to be misguided, then indeed there is none to guide that person. Had I bear witness that there is no deity, no God deserving of being worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May the peace and the blessings of Allah be upon him, upon his companions, and upon all those who follow in their understanding and practice of this deen until Allah establishes the hour. Our Lord Allah mentions in his book Al-Quran addressing the believers with the ayah Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda O you who believe have taqwa of Allah and speak a word of truth Yuslih lakum a'amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhanubakum and by it Allah Azza wa Jalla he will correct for you your affairs and he will forgive for you your sins wa may yuti Allah wa rasoola faqad faza fawzu nadheema and the one who is obedient to Allah and to his messenger then indeed that person shall obtain the greatest of all successes in this world and in the hereafter to proceed to continue our discussion regarding how following the methodology of a Salaf al Salih it leads to the rectification of society, it leads to an improvement, it helps to remove the harm or to negate it. And in our previous lessons, we spoke about the importance of al-ikhlas and adherence to the sunnah and the obligation to enjoy the good and to forbid the evil and today we want to speak about what the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in his hadith inna ahabba nasi ila Allah that indeed the most beloved of the people to Allah are those who are those who are the most beneficial to the people so the most beloved of all of mankind are those who are the most beneficial to the others that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said يفرج يوانه كربا because he removes from him a harm or يقضي يوانه دينا or he fulfills a debt for him or يطرد يوانه جوعا or he removes his hunger so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made reference to these three matters, actions which a person, if he performs them, he's demonstrating his benefit to the others. Removing harm from a person, difficulty, whatever that may be, even a simple matter such as an obstacle from the path that is injurious to the others or that he becomes aware he's in debt or has some financial difficulty and then he alleviates that for them or even the simple matter that he feeds him and therefore removes his hunger that person he is amongst the most beloved of the people to Allah Azza wa Jalla, because he is amongst the most beneficial to the others. And in the hadith collected by Al-Hakim that was authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ahlul ma'roofi fi dunya hum ahlul ma'roofi fi al-akhirah. That those who are the good doers, 
The ones who had al khair in them, then they will be the ones who are the good doers even in the hereafter. So consider how Allah Azza wa Jalla, He will honor them by making them amongst the good doers in the hereafter. And this is from the manhaj, the methodology of a salaf al salih. And as we mentioned in our previous lessons, that this methodology is founded upon that which came before. I not only the three generations of the companions of those who followed them and those who followed them, but rather those who preceded them. That whenever Allah would favor them with a blessing, a virtue, a particular skill or attribute, then they would use it in order to benefit mankind. Consider how in Surah Sad, Allah Azza wa Jalla made reference to two of the great prophets of Banu Israel, Dawood and his son Sulaiman alayhim as -salam. He said, وَلَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ مِنَّا فَضْلَيْ That indeed we gave to Dawood two blessings. يَا جِبَالُ أَوِّبِي مَعْهُمْ وَالطَّيْرُ وَأَلَنَّا لَهُ الْحَدِيدِ Allah Azza wa Jalla said that we made the mountains and the birds sing the praises of Allah along with Dawood alayhi salam. So consider an inanimate object, a mountain, Allah, he made, he made it subservient to the command of Dawood alayhi salam and the birds. And that he made iron soft in his hands. So what did he do with that? With the blessings that Allah gave to him, conferred upon him. Allah said, وَقَدَّرْ فِي السَّرْدِ وَعَمَلُوا صَالِحًا عَنِعْمَلْ صَابِغَاتْ وَقَدَّرْ فِي السَّرْدِ وَعَمَلُوا صَالِحًا إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah said that, O oh Dawood, now that I've made iron soft in your hands, then take that iron and make coats of mail. A coat of mail is what they used to use in those times in order to protect themselves in war against arrows and spears and swords and so on and so forth. And Allah said, وَقَدَّرْ فِي السَّرْدِ And then you make the links in these coats of mail perfect in their dimension. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla gave him the ability to do that, so he obligated upon him to exercise it in the best possible manner. Because I can see that which you do. Then Allah said, And we gave to Sulaiman the wind. Allah made it subservient to his command so the wind would transport Sulaiman wherever he wanted, a month's distance or a month's journey in the morning and the evening, he والسلام, had that ability. And that we made a spring of copper gush forth. So he had this metal coming out of the ground. وَمِنَ الْجِنِّ مَنْ يَعْمَلُ بَيْنِ يَدَيْ بِذِنِ رَبِّي And the jinn word for Sulaiman alayhi salam وَمَنْ يَزِقْ مِنْهُمْ عَنْ أَمْرِنَا نُذِكْهُ مِنْ أَذَابِ السَّعِيرِ And those who disobeyed him in any matter, then Allah, he warned them that they would taste a painful punishment. <laughs> These matters that we can only imagine, the power that those two prophets alayhim salam had and all of it in its entirety they used it for the deen of Allah azza wa jalla but what's interesting is that despite having this enormous power an army that comprised of men animals birds and jinn despite all of this 
Allah Azza wa Jalla said that Dawood alayhi salam said as he mentioned in Al-Quran وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُدَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ إِلْمَا that we gave Dawood and Sulaiman knowledge وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَدَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِنْ إِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and Allah said that he said alayhi salam that because of this فَدَّلَنَا that Allah's preferred us over many amongst his believing slaves meaning that all of those other matters, the spring of copper, iron soft in his hands, the birds and the mantis subservient to his command, the wind transporting Sulaiman alayhi salam, all of that was superseded by an ilm that Allah he gave Dawood and Sulaiman. But what they used with that knowledge, or what they did with it, is that they recognize that was for the establishment of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that's one of the benefits of Al-Ilm. That you understand what your obligation is in this dunya. Knowledge is not only used in order that you attain closeness to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that's the greatest of the matters. That by you understand how to worship of Allah, but knowledge, it also makes you understand what your obligation is in this dunya. That is why Imam Shatabi in his book, Al Muwafaqat, when he described the Maqasid al Sharia, the objectives of the Sharia, he mentioned five. That at the deen of Allah, as Allah said in the deen in the Allah al Islam, that it, in its entirety it has come in order to protect five rights. Al-haya, the life of a person. Al-aql, the intellect. Al-mal, the wealth. Al-ird, the honor. And the fifth is a deen. These five matters that a shatabi rahimahullah mentioned that al-ulama have affirmed is what the sharia of Allah has come in order to protect and preserve. So therefore, Al-Aqil, the one who is intelligent, who has knowledge of this matter, is going to use what Allah Azza wa Jalla has given him in order to establish that which is beneficial for the people. And whatever a person acquires in this dunya, it will be insignificant and lowly in comparison to fulfilling the obligation that Allah has upon you. So in one hadith, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the hadith of Abu Huraira, he questioned or is said that Su'ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, ayyul amali afdal, that which actions are the best? And he sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Imanun billahi al iman in Allah. Then they said, and then what? He said, Al Jihadu fi Sabilillah. Al Jihad upon the path of Allah. Then the question, and then what? He said, Hajjun Mabrur, a Hajj which is accepted. So in, in the first narration of Abu Huraira, he said that the best action is Imanun Billah. In the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Sa'altu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyul a'mali yafdal. I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which action is the best? And he said, As-salatu li waqtiha, that you pray in accordance to the correct time. Then they asked him, and then what? He said, Birrul walidain, being good to your parents. Then they questioned, and then what? He said, Al jihadu fi sabilillah, to fight upon the path of Allah. So in the hadith of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, when he questioned the Prophet ﷺ, what is the best action? He said, As salatu li waqtiha, that you pray in accordance to its correct time. In the hadith of Abu Huraira, he said that the best action is Iman in Allah. In the third hadith 
of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al As, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was questioned, Ayyul Islam khair, which action in Al Islam is the best? And he said, that you feed others. salam, and you recite the salam. upon the one who you know and the one who you do not know. So we have three ahadith. In each one, when he was questioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is the best action? And the first he said, imamun billah. And the second he said, as-salatu li waqtiha. And in the third he said, tuti'im al-ta'am. Now why is it that we have three different orations and in each one he said something different? The scholars, both past and present, have explained that the difference between them is, is that what is the greatest need of the people at that particular time? So when, for example, there was shirk and kufr and bidda and khurafa, all of these matters, superstitious false beliefs and association with Allah and unbelief. When you had all of these matters that were present during the time when they first called the people to Al-Islam in Mecca, then the best action was Iman and Billah. It was to call the people to have Al-Iman in Allah. Then when that has been established, what is the best action? What is it that we encourage the people to do? It is a salatu li waqtiha. It is to pray in accordance to its time. And then when everybody's praying, then what is it that we encourage the people to do? To ta'am, that you feed the others. This is how they explain we affect a union between these ahadith. In our time today, based upon the needs of the people and understanding what the maqasid, the objectives of the sharia is. The greatest need that we have today after calling the people to the deen of Allah is the establishment of these schools. It's an amazing matter that it's almost an indicator of their misguidance that the largest group in this town, the Brelvia, who have access to the most funds and the most resources, have failed, have been incapable or have neglected or are unconcerned with establishing a place in which their children will be educated in accordance to the principles of the Deen of Allah. That's almost an indication and evidence of their misguidance. Why? Because had they understood the deen of Allah correctly, they would have recognized what their obligation is towards the people. And from that, as we said, it is their aql, their intellect, by ensuring that they're educated in a safe and secure place. It is their ir, their honor, in order to ensure that this place protects them from entering into sin and deviation. It is their mal, their wealth, in order to ensure that it's then channeled in the correct manner because they've been educated upon the correct way. But when they neglected to do that, it's almost like it's an indicator of their misguidance. And that should not be a surprising matter. For Allah said in Surah Tawbah, مَا كَانَ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ أَيَّعْمَرُوا مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ شَاهِدِينَ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ بِالْقُفْرِ It is not for al-mushrikeen that they should take care of the mosques of Allah whilst they are witnessing against themselves their own unbelief. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Indeed, those who take care of the mosques of Allah are the ones who believe in Allah on the last day. وَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ They establish the prayer. وَآتَ الزَّكَةِ They give the zakah. وَلَنْ يَخْشَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And they have al-khashya for no one except Allah. That is why Allah said further on in Surah Tawbah, مَنْ أَسَّسَ بُنْيَانَهُ عَلَى تَقْوَى مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِدْوَانِ 
that whoever establishes bunyanahu, their building, ala taqwa min Allah, upon taqwa of Allah wa ridwan, and seeking his pleasure, khayrun is better. Mimman asasa bunyanahu wa la shifa jurufin harin fanhara bihi fi nari jahannam wallahu la yahdi al-qawm al-zalameen. That is better that you establish your building upon taqwa of Allah Ridwan than the one who establishes building upon the edge of a cliff which is about to fall and then cause the collapse of their building and then it collapses upon them and it takes them to the fire. So the one who seeks the pleasure of Allah and he has taqwa of Allah, then indeed that action will bear fruit. And as I said, that no matter what a person does during the life of this dunya, what you acquire, then it will be insignificant with regards to what you expend from your efforts, seeking the pleasure of Allah, building something that is of benefit to the people. And the asal of that is al-ilm as that ayat states when Dawood alayhi salam said Alhamdulillah, all praises for Allah Alladhi faddalana who preferred us over many from amongst his believing slaves. Now recently we know that that conference took place in Sheffield. So I had the opportunity for three days to go and be in close proximity with Shaykh Saleh Sahimi, Hafizahullah. And I can say with complete sincerity and honesty that every one of those days every hour of that day being in his presence a person who is in his 70s who is old and who's blind and yet he travels the world even though he has a position in the mosque of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he could stay in medina where thousands of people go yet he goes still travels around the world to be in his presence I remembered the statement of Luqman al-Hakim when he advised us, son, Ya Bunayya, Jalis al-Ulama, sit with al-Ulama wa zahim hum bi rukbatayk and sit close with them, your knees towards them, because indeed Allah, he gives life to the hearts as he gives life to dead earth by life giving rain from the firmament from the sky. I remember that narration because it truly did. But the reason being, is because of what he, what he made manifest from al-ilm, what he represented from learning and teaching and being of benefit to the people. Like the hadith states that those who are the most beloved to Allah and fa'ahum lindas are the ones who are the most beneficial to the people. And then Shortly after that, it's very strange that I had to go to London because I had to present our IT plan to one of the, or to the chairman. And he's a person who, they told me, oh, they talked about his wealth. So they said that he's worth many, many hundreds of millions. So when I arrived there, I saw this person, I met him and I saw this person. And I remember that a few weeks earlier, I was sat with Sheikh Saleh Sahimi and I compared and contrasted. And of course, there was no comparison in reality because one was an alim, a Muslim. The other one is an unbeliever who is not an alim. But the effect that it had upon you is it made you realize that this person, whatever he acquired from the wealth of this world, it had no effect upon you in terms of your Iman, except it reminded you of what the greater purpose was, which is establishing the deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Now today, we are at this point where 10 years later, 
after we've established the first school, we're on the verge, insha'Allah ta'ala, of our third building. And that is a matter that is a source of great happiness, is a source of rejoicing. But at the same time, there's a, a very important point I want to make regarding this. And that is that dawah, in order for that to have a practical manifestation in the society in which you live in, it's got to be connected with the projects that you're involved in. If your dawah doesn't make reference to these matters, then the people who are engaged or involved in that dawah, it becomes of secondary importance to them. Ten years ago, prior to the establishment of our first school, the primary, a lot of our dawah was connected to what our obligation was with regards to that school. Even in our ordinary lessons, we were to make reference to it. So there was a clear connection in the minds of the people, the brothers and the sisters, with seeking this knowledge, acting in accordance to it, and then making it manifest by working with regards to that project. During the time that followed, there was a disconnect that the Dawah still continued but there was no longer a significant emphasis upon that matter. And that, and Allah knows best, is perhaps one of the reasons why fewer and fewer from amongst the brothers were then actively involved in working towards that establishment. And that's a problem. Because it's a dawah, it has to bear a fruit. There has to be an end consequence that the people can see. When Ibrahim salam, was given this knowledge, he said, Ya Abati inni qad ja'ani min al-almi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahadika sirat and suwiyya. He said, Oh my father, in qad ja'ani min al knowledge has come to me, that which has not come to you. So follow me. And I will guide you upon that correct way. Knowledge first came to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then he went to Mecca to his son who he had left by the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he addressed him and he said, Inna Allah qad amarani an abni yahahuna baytan. He said, Allah has commanded me to build a house here. And he pointed to the place where the Kaaba would be established. And his son was listening. And at that point, his son Ismail alayhi salam, he'd got to an age where he could assist his father. As Allah said, that when he had become older and he could now help his aged father. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Wa inna Allah qad amarani an tu'inani ala. He said, and Allah has commanded me that you should help me to build that house. So then, as we know, as Allah said, وَإِذْ يَرْفَى إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَائِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ and remember when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he raised the foundations of the house and his son Ismail and they said, our Lord accept it from us. Indeed, you are the one who is all hearing and has knowledge. The practical effect of that knowledge that came to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, is that he built the Kaaba. Or he raised the foundations, that building that today is the center of the worship of the believers. Then the Prophet wasallam he built the masjid in Medina. And those who came after them, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he built the dome of the rock. And he expanded Masjid al-Aqsa.
And all of these matters, all of them that took place as a result of the recognition of the obligation upon them. That is something that needs to return. We need to once again understand that our obligation, yes, is to seek this knowledge and it is to act in accordance to it, but it is also to work in that time that Allah has given us with that ability that Allah has favored us with in order to ensure that these schools are established, that they're expanded and that the benefit continues until Allah allows it to remain. For the one who directs and guides towards goodness, then he will have the reward of the one who performs it after him and there will be no reduction in their reward whatsoever. And as the Prophet وسلم, he advised Ali radiallahu an with those words لَإِنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلٌ that if Allah guides by you a single person then it is better for you than humr al naam the red colored camels. There are efforts in the establishment of these schools that if Allah protects as a result of them a single child, raises them upon the sunnah with understanding of this blessed methodology, then they go out and call the people to it, then that will continue until Allah allows this world to continue. And as Imam Malik rahimahullah said, when they questioned him regarding Az al Muatta, after many of the others had written a book similar to it, he said, Makana lillahi baqiya, that what that which is performed for the sake of Allah alone, baqiya, that that which is performed for the sake of Allah alone will continue. Wallahu alam. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik